What's going on guys? Today I have the second upgrade video for my white 2010 unibody MacBook and that's with the memory. Now currently there's two gigabytes of RAM in here which you know a couple years ago was awesome fine and dandy but for what I'm going to be using this machine for which is you know a good amount of virtual mis machine usage for school I uh, edit the occasional video that two gigabytes just is not enough RAM and so I went out and I bought one of these kits from OWC. This is an eight gigabyte kit now a lot of you guys are going to say dude why'd you go with OWC for RAM for like an older computer, you probably could have went to like Newegg or you know eBay or somewhere and got some RAM that was eight gigabytes in capacity and like half the price that OWC would charge. And at first I did that. I actually ordered eight gigabytes of RAM from Newegg and it was the exact same specs that was in this machine, which was uh, 1067 megahertz, PC3, 8500, DDR3 RAM, like the exact same specs. But whenever I put both sticks in, it simply would not boot. I googled all over the place and I just couldn't even find why it wouldn't work. So I just went and I got the OWC and hopefully this is going to work for us just fine. So with that said, I don't want to bore you guys anymore. Let's go ahead, tear this machine apart and upgrade that memory. So here we have everything we're going to need for the upgrade. We have our 2010 MacBook, we have our RAM, which like I said in the beginning is 8 gigabytes from OWC, and we also have a size 00 Phillips head screwdriver. In some cases, OWC will give you this depending on what you get. For example, I got the data doubler, which you can see in my previous upgrade video, and with the data doubler they gave you this screwdriver as well as many others. But with, with the case of this memory, I did not get. So, you know, depending on what you get, you could get this from OWC, or you could just head to your local, you know, hardware store and pick one up yourself. But with that said, all this stuff is going to be put off to the side for just a second. And I'm going to flip the MacBook over. And keep in mind that, you know, your MacBook cannot be sleeping or anything during this. It has to be shut down all the way completely. Otherwise, you could run into problems. So the first thing we have to do is remove these eight screws. We have four on this side and four on this side. It's pretty easy to do. And with the magic of video editing, this will be done in just one second. All right, now that all the screws have been removed, what I'm simply gonna do is on the top here, put my fingers down below this little surface here. And depending on your MacBook, this might come off a little bit harder. You might have to really, you know, kind of force it up. But in either case, it shouldn't be that bad. And mine has come off pretty easily. And well, here's the inside of the MacBook. Now that we're looking inside of the MacBook, the part we're going to be focusing on in this video is right here. This is where the MacBook's two RAM modules are, and in fact the modules we're going to be switching out. So now let's go ahead and get a closer look at this guy. So here we have those two RAM modules. You see one, there's also another one right underneath this. And right now, each one of these sticks is one gigabyte for a total of two gigabytes. And like I said earlier, I'll be upgrading this to eight gigabytes. So it's gonna be quite the upgrade. And now before we actually you know, go out and switch those components, I do wanna say that this piece right here, while it doesn't need to be removed in order to change your memory, I definitely recommend it because it's very easy to take out and it really will just make your life easier when it comes to putting in and taking out these memory modules. So as you can see, there's two screws, one on each side. All you do is use the same exact screwdriver as we just did and unscrew those and it comes right up. So both the screws have been loosened and now this whole entire piece literally just comes right out. And also with that, I'm gonna take out this hard drive just because it'll give us some extra space. So if you've never done this before, be careful because there is a ribbon cable underneath here that is attached. So all you do is simply uh, remove it by pulling on it like that. And now just set your hard drive off to the side. And now to get these memory modules out of here, there's two little flaps on each side of this. All you do is push outwards and you can see that module popped up. I'll go ahead and I'll do that one last time. When it's in the upright position, all you do is simply pull straight out and there's your first memory module. And actually, if you look on this, it might be kind of hard to read, but you can see it is in fact one gigabyte. And now we're simply gonna do the same thing again, pull out that flap. The second one will pop up and simply pull this out the exact same way as you did with the last guy. And there you go, your memory is out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the OWC memory. And so here we have that memory right here. Go and give you guys a little closer look at you know all the, uh, the serial numbers and whatnot. So uh, we're just gonna take this guy out of the package like so. And now when you install your memory, you noticed on the last slots as well, or on the last modules, uh, there's a little notch here that's off-center, so you can only install the RAM one way So be sure that you do it correctly Otherwise, you're gonna damage with some of these pins over here And then what do you know you're out however much this memory did in fact cost you also another thing to keep in mind that the MacBook takes a very very specific memory uh, I tried to put some uh, 1333 megahertz RAM in here. The MacBook would not use it I tried to even put some um, RAM in here that was not from OWC but even had these same specs which are listed on here which is you know 1066 megahertz PC3 
8500, all that stuff, it was identical to that, and even that wouldn't work. So that's why I went with OWC. OWC is a very reputable brand, so keep that in mind that you know you don't want to just buy any RAM for this MacBook because it does indeed take very specific memory, which is one reason that a lot of people don't like Macs is that they, you know, they're kind of specific, which a lot of people don't like. But before I go ahead and, and do that, the way we're looking at it right now, as you can see right here, there's that little slot, that little notch. Make sure that that lines up because once again, you could damage your pins. So all we're gonna do is with this one, you actually install it at an angle. Don't try to slide it in perfectly, you know, horizontal. It is at an angle. So uh, we'll do the best we can to get, a, get you guys a good view of this. But there we go, it's pretty much lined up. Now all you do is push it in like so, and then push down. And there you go, there's our first DIMM, which is four gigabytes. And so I'm gonna reach over here. We're gonna get the second stick, which is another four gigabytes. Nice look at it there. And then make sure that notch is on the left. Same exact angled installation. And once it's pushed all the way in, push directly down. And now we have installed eight, if you can get all the fingers in here, eight gigabytes of RAM. And now that the RAM has been installed, all I'm simply gonna do is push this MacBook back up and reinstall my optical drive because we are all done with the memory. It's that easy. And so, you know, just make sure you line up the SATA connections. Don't stretch that ribbon cable. And now you'll notice on the hard drive here, there's two little, I guess, notches, you could call them. Those actually go in right over here. So make sure that you, you know, line those up correctly, which is very easy to do. And there we go. Next, we're gonna put back this piece right here. Now, if you look at this, you'll notice that these orange pieces aren't in the center of it. You know, they're pushed off to one side. Make sure that the side they're pushed onto is facing the hard drive, otherwise it won't sit right. So I put that on top and simply screw these two screws back into place. Now that our RAM and our hard drive have been put back into place, we're now ready to seal this MacBook up and put the cover back on. So we're simply going to line this up, make sure the side that has this little cutout here is on the same side that has the, the notebook's hinge on it. And once you do that, push down just a little bit. You'll hear kind of a little click if you did it right. And now we simply put those eight screws right back in. All right, all eight screws have been put back into place. Now it's time to boot her up and make sure it works. All right, so here we have the MacBook, and now I'm gonna hit that power button and hopefully nothing blows up. All right, so far so good. And now I guess what I'll do, because this is a pretty fast machine, contrary to what a lot of people might think, there's a nice real-time boot up test. And as you can see, it actually was pretty quick. Especially, like I said, I mean, for being a machine that's from 2010, I have no complaints about this guy. And now that it has eight gigabytes of RAM, hopefully it'll help with some parallels performance and things like that. But here we have the MacBook right here, and now I'm gonna come up to the About This Mac menu. And we're gonna head to About This Mac. And hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna try to zoom in on this as good as I can. We are running Mavericks. This is develop the developer preview six. Uh, so 10.9. 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo, and of course that eight gigabytes of 1067 megahertz DDR3 memory. So this will definitely help out with things like parallels, or you know, if I try to say, for example, edit just a small video on here or something like that, that RAM will definitely help out. But there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this very quick and easy upgrade. I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com, and I hope to see you guys back here very soon.